Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you at the end of a, another working week. Anyway, it's Friday, sun is shining, no Arsenal to ruin your weekend this weekend. What could be better? So enjoy it, uh, whatever you're doing this weekend. I hope you have a good one. You forget about Arsenal for a little while and then we start focusing all our attention on Norwich from Monday onwards. But a little bit to talk about in today's video, so I thought I'd pop on here. Obviously, we had the behind-closed-doors game against Brentford yesterday. A very young Brentford team, far from their first team. In fact, pretty much full of kids. A couple of more experienced players in there, and Arsenal winning it fairly handsomely, 4-0. Perhaps we should play all our games at London Colney because we tend to win those ones, don't we? Um, but a good run out for Arsenal nonetheless. Cedric scored twice. Lacazette scored a very good free kick by all accounts. And Gabriel also scored. Um, reason behind the game was just to give some minutes to some players who needed them. You know, get some minutes in the legs of Ben White. who's just coming back from COVID. Gabriel as well. So a very worthwhile run out for Arsenal. Um, Mikhail said we had the possibility to play Brentford again and we had quite a lot of players who needed some minutes some of them come back from injury, some Covid so it was a good test and a good workout the Arsenal team in that one was Ramsdale, Chambers, White, Mary, Gabriel, Cedric, Maitland-Niles, Elneny, Martinelli, Lacazette and Pepe Amari Hutchinson came on 15 minutes to go for Ben White and uh, Rob Holding came on for Gabriel. Charlie Patino came on for the injured Mohamed Elneny after just 33 minutes I think Akin Kolo came on as well, though that wasn't listed on the Arsenal website, but I think he came on as well, judging by the pictures. Really good to see Charlie Patino getting 60 minutes pretty much in the centre midfield there with the senior players, and he played really, really well by all accounts. Lots of good um, comments coming from how Patino played. I understand he made a big impression on some of his senior teammates as well, so that's good for him, real talented player. I've spoken about him plenty of times before in these videos. I wrote a big piece for goal on him sort of documenting his rise and talking about why he is so highly, highly rated. I mean, still he's only 17, Patino midfielder. He's not one who's been earmarked for loan. He's one like Bakai Saka who's been earmarked to progress straight up to the first team, such as his quality. It'll be interesting to see how long he stays around in the under-23 as well, because he's just broken through. I mean, he's that young. He's only just really now in the under-23s. But sometimes you look at these players who are... Very, very technical, very gifted, which is what Patino is. And you wonder, does 23's football suit them that well? Can they really express themselves? And that's why they step up early and get integrated into the first team. It happened with Saka, it happened with Jack Wiltshire. And Patino is certainly play a player from all accounts who has the talent to do that. And he showed it yesterday, albeit again, you have to say, against a very, very young Brentford side. But a good, uh, good day for Patino, good day for Arsenal as well. Decent minutes in some of those players as I said great to see Ben White back great to see Gabriel back um, and that, yeah that should bode well for the Norwich game Mikel did a little bit with club media the Arsenal media after the game obviously he didn't speak to, uh, to us but he spoke to the Arsenal Arsenal.com and the w interview went out on so on their website and social if you haven't seen it already he talked a little bit about the transfer window that you know the window had just shut and he said it was a complicated market we had a lot of things to do I think we had 16 or 17 transactions which is a lot the club has made a big effort we had the support from the owners to try and do it and we had to recruit in the terms that we could I am very pleased and he was asked about you know the sort of profile of player that that he brought in you know 21 to 23 no one older than 23 and he said um um Play, signed players with different experiences. Some had experience in the league, some abroad, and have been coached in other ways, but they are players we have followed for a long time. We know they could fit into the model we are trying to implement at the club, so we are pleased. And pretty clear what that model is that he's talking about when it comes to that they're trying to implement at the club with full of young, youthful players, both from the academy and from elsewhere. He was asked about signing a Tomiyasu on deadline day. He said, look, we followed him for a while. We needed a fullback who could be very versatile. We can play at centre-back. We can play in a back three. Tommy has this capacity. He's 22 years old. Some really good experience in Serie A at an international level and has the qualities we are looking for. Interesting that Arsenal played a back three in that game against Brentford yesterday. I mean, we can't probably read too much into it just because of um, it was a 
behind closed doors training ground game I don't know who else was potentially available in that one but he seemed to go with a back three whether that's in his thinking for the long term at Arsenal I still don't think so I know a lot of people have suggested that it is I for me I still see the sign in of Tommy Asu as coming in and him being a right back in a straight flat back four but we know Arteta likes to change things around in games as well and he'll certainly add um to the ability for Arsenal to do that I mean it's already have that with Ben White who's a right sided centre back who can play right back and now you've added it with Tomiyasu as well so plenty of versatility in that back line for Arsenal when you think Tomiyasu can play left back you've got Nuno Tavares who can play left back and right back so lots of um, interchangeable positions there with amongst the squad and you would hope with Gabriel back and Ben White back that defence is going to start looking a lot more settled and, crucially, a lot more solid than it has done in the first few weeks of the season. They'll certainly be stronger in that position when it comes to Norwich um, next Saturday. So that is a plus point. One slightly negative from that game yesterday was the um, the fact that Thomas Partey wasn't involved. We were told, you know, he's going to be back in training this week. I don't. I haven't heard that there's been any sort of setback in that. In fact, people that I've spoken to close to Thomas Party, they still think he's got a chance of playing or being involved against Norwich. Whether that would be on the bench, I probably think it would be because he's wasn't involved in his friendly. I don't think Arsenal are going to be playing any more friendlies between now and that Norwich game. So it'd be unlikely the party gets thrown straight into the starting lineup, even with Granite Xhaka. Um, injured, you would think maybe that we might see Lukonga and potentially Ainsley Maitland-Niles in that position, depending on the injury to Ain uh, to Mohamed El Nenny. But um, yeah, there's no great concern over Thomas Party. Like I said, I spoke to someone yesterday who's very close to Party, and he believes that there is an opportunity he still will be involved against Norwich. And it was just the fact that yesterday's came, game came a little bit too soon for him, but he is still due to return to training very, very soon, and will hopefully be back pushing for a place in the uh certainly in the squad but in the starting 11 not too um, not too far away now and that will be a big big boost because we all know how good Thomas Party can be and how much better Arsenal are when you've got a fit and um available Thomas Party available so that's the latest when it comes to uh Thomas Otherwise, it's been relatively quiet. A lot of Arsenal players on international duty at the moment. Obviously, Bert Leno started for Germany. Bukai Saka came on late on for England yesterday in their win at Hungary. Wanted to talk a little bit about Daniel Ballard, who a big night for him last night. Scored his first goal for Northern Ireland in their 4-1 win. I think it was 4-1. Was it 4-1? Yeah, 4-1 win against Lithuania. Um, so, big moment for him. And I've had a lot of questions about Ballard um, in, over the last sort of 12 hours or so on social media after I posted the picture of him celebrating his goal asking about his contract situation because he is out of contract at the end of the season um, but my understanding Arsenal do have a two-year option on that which can be triggered um, just to sort of protect themselves but I think what we'll see and he's obviously at loan at Mill at the moment Daniel Ballard and I imagine there will be talks between now and the end of the season to extend his contract not just trigger that clause but actually give him a new and improved long-term contract because you know, Daniel Ballard's just going from strength to strength at the moment. He had such a good loan spell with Blackpool last season, got him promoted to the Premier League. Now he's in Millwall, in the, sorry, got him promoted to the Championship. Now he's playing for Millwall in the Championship this season, and Millwall got a decent team and could have a good season. Um, you know, he's starring for Northern Ireland, scoring for Northern Ireland now. So Daniel Ballard, his career is certainly heading in that direction. That's a tra trajectory he is on. He's only 22 and it just makes absolute perfect sense for Arsenal now to time down to a long-term contract. That's not saying that's for him to go on and be a regular centre-back for Mikel Arteta in the future. But, you know, there's the when it comes to the academy, you've got plan A and plan B. You've got plan A, which is to progress through into the first team. But then if that doesn't happen, you've got plan B, which is to, you know, build them up to a certain level and then sell them for as much money as possible. And this is the plan that... Chelsea have worked to for a long, long time when it comes to their academy and have had so much success. Look at the money they've earned just this summer selling players who are on the fringes of the first team, didn't make it, and they've now sold them on for big, big money. And I think that's what you're looking at players like Daniel Ballard, who's clearly a very talented young defender. Whether he's got a chance at Arsenal, I don't know, because you've got plenty of centre-backs in his position. You've got the William Saliba situation as well. So for me, I'd imagine what you're going to see with Ballard is between at some point, between now and the end of the season, Arsenal will go into talks with him to extend his contract on a long-term basis, potentially then send him out on loan again next next season. But that will give him plenty of time. It will give Ballard um, 
uh, plenty of security and it will give Arsenal plenty of time to assess the situation with him. And if he's not going to make it at Arsenal, then I'll have a player committed to a long-term contract who they can sell, then sell on potentially for big money. Because you're looking at Ballard at the moment and the way he's playing in the championship, international level, he's only 22 years old. If you get him tied to a long-term contract, you're potentially next summer looking at a £15 million asset there. Um, so even if he's not going to make it in the first team, you're, you've got a very valuable asset. So I would suggest that Arsenal will give him a contract. They'll probably trigger that clause very soon because I think it has to be triggered at some point this season. Um, and they'll probably trigger that clause to give him the extra security but then they will enter talks to extend it properly and giving them a new and improved contract. So that's the latest on Daniel Ballard for people that have been asking. Other than that, there's not too much going on. So this is a bit of a short, sharp video today. Um, anything else that happens, please do keep your eye on my social media account on goal.com for all your latest Arsenal news as we progress through the weekend. But hopefully it's going to be a pretty quiet one. And like I said, we don't have to worry too much about Arsenal. You can sit back, enjoy the sunshine, enjoy some international football, and then we'll start worrying about Arsenal again as next week continues. All right, everyone, have a good day. I'll speak to you very, very soon.